to the Lord I used to dance for the devil now I'm dancing for the king of kings you can go go down go down go down go for the devil not for Jesus look at Shows you that I did a bit of song leading. Amen. We used to we used to call them song leaders. A song leader. Amen. Now we've got ministers and worshipers. Hallelujah. No, we are so blessed this evening. We have a special guest other from America, Maryland. God bless you. Come and celebrate them. Don't be minister to us. Now, just wave, 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 wave. Celebrate them. Celebrate. Wow. Now, it's good to see you with your lovely wife. Um, I don't want to call you by your first name. What's your surname? That's what, what? Kings. King. With your family. God bless you. You know, usually when, uh, when, when I'm in America, uh, they, 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 they say if I'm the prostitute, Lorenzi and the wife, their sons there, but they really take care of us. You know, we live with them, and uh, these people can make you grow fat, you know. In, in America, it's an offense. Don't use that word. In America, don't use that word. Here, we are okay. We don't use that word in America. <laughs> They get upset. I get. So I'm very careful with them. I'll make sure I, I, am, I miss breakfast and then I miss lunch. You know. But all in all, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. You're a lovely couple, a lovely family. We love you. It's good to see Pastor, Pastor Paul in the making. Where are you, Paul? He's somewhere. A miracle man. He's a miracle man. I, I changed his name. Paul, a miracle man. Amen. Powerful testimony. I will see how the Lord will lead us today. And they came with a lovely team. Uh, I believe at the right time, Pastor C, Reverend C, Pastor so much in me, Reverend C. He's not a reverend. <laughs> Amen. You come and introduce them, the whole team. Amen. Amen. The chosen generation are ready for us. We're going to go back to back. Amen. Uh, when we're just looking in, Somebody whispered in my ears that Ephraim is here also. <laughs> so, we, this one we can call him anytime. Amen. He can come. It's, it's, it's home, home ground advantage. But our friends, we want them to minister to us. So Ephraim will do about one or two, so, two songs or so. And then the chosen generation will join. And they will just, they will just flow. Amen. And then Pastor C will come, minister. Uh, we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. Man of God, here we believe in the move of the Spirit. So if the Holy Ghost wants us to take us up to 05, we are ready for you. 
We are ready for you. <laughs> Shalom members, are you ready for them? We are ready. We are ready. Are you ready? For the word. Yeah. We are ready. Where are you ready? For the word. Okay, for okay, the word. okay, okay, okay. Uh, you are praying for yourself. We are ready. Are you ready? Uh, let's give to the Lord. Let's just worship the, the substance. Look for an offering. Drop it on the altar. In the next few minutes, the chosen generation will be there. Please. Celebrate Ephraim as he come. Please worship him at the lips. Take around as he ministers with his team. He came with his team who allowed them just to bless us. And then the chosen generation opened up. And then Reverend C and Mama C, they'll come also and just bless us. Amen. Are you ready? Shalom, Embassy. If you're ready, get your offering as a minister. Just drop it on the altar and let the Lord be glorified this evening. Ephraim, God bless you, Pastor Ephraim. <laughs> God is good. We didn't want to remain home when we heard that God was coming to minister here. We said, ah, we, need, we need to go and uh, do our moral support, not only to dad, but also to the team all the way from the U.S., They've been a blessing to us and we just wanted to appreciate each one of you we love you so much amen chosen generation we love you so much hallelujah O yumwela wenu upo shama wenu yonsi Aya maka yenu eyo tule mwona pano Ike ni yawe lange nyamaka yenu Yeah, Yeah. 
Just tell Jesus to say The beauty with our God that is able to hear every word that comes from us. Now when you speak this word from your heart, God wants you to know that he will act upon that very word. To Sashani. To Sashani. One more time. To Sashani. To Sashani. To Sashani. To Sashani. Swim Yani. Swim Yani. Swim just come to believe but we have come to know they that know their God and that's, that, that's when you're singing a song like Maui like I can't explain I can't explain that's what the song means hallelujah <laughs> It's in Tuishike. Yeah. 
yes Lord I should not let you in my cup I should not let you yes Lord I should not let you song right here at this altar I didn't know that just two weeks after that I was going to lose my mother and then I said Lord but how do I sing this song and then God told me
our home tonight I say there is nothing missing nothing is broken right now right now we're declaring healing right now we're, we're, we're putting out in the atmosphere there is nothing missing there is nothing wrong say with me and there is nothing Declare it upon your life right now. Declare it upon your life right now. You see, healing comes by faith. Healing comes by faith. And in that faith, you receive your healing. There is nothing missing. Oh, there is nothing missing. There is nothing is missing right now. Because God is the God is in this room. There is nothing missing, there's nothing broken. There is nothing missing, there's nothing, there is nothing missing. Away. There is nothing broken right now, Jesus. I receive my healing, I receive it now. Nothing is missing, Lord. There is nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, there is nothing missing. There is nothing broken. There is nothing missing. There is nothing because He's the same God as yesterday. He's the same God as yesterday. He's the same God. <laughs> oh, there is nothing missing. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, declare it. Put yourself as a point of contact for your family. Put yourself as a point of contact for your child. Put yourself. I say there is, there is, there is nothing. Hey, there is nothing. Hey, 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 you're the same God as yesterday. There's nothing missing. There's nothing broken. You know why we can declare that? Because there's power in the tongue. There's power in the tongue. He's the same God. He's the same God. You're the God that opens every door. You're the same God to make the blind eyes see. You're the same God to make the lame to walk. You're the same God that brings me victory, Jesus. Ah, there's nothing missing, nothing. Declare with me. You're the God that opens every door. 
Are you here to worship? 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 Are you ready for victory? Are you ready for war? Because he's already in this room. Say, you are the God that opens every door. the same God, yes, you are the God that makes the light I see, yes, you are the same God to bring you me, you are the God that gives me, oh, I said, I said, you are the God, the God that opens it, yes, you The God that brings me victory. Oh, I said I'll find, I'll find no way. God, we worship. Come on, get your war shoes on. We worship. Come on, I worship your name. It's in that worship. It's in that rejoice. Are you ready to rejoice with me? Are you ready to rejoice with me? Because I believe God has done it for us. I say worship, worship. Shout out to God. Give a shout out to God. Let's get ready to rejoice in his name. Are you ready to rejoice? Are you ready to rejoice? Because I told you it's by faith. That's your healing, right? So we're going to rejoice.
going to rejoice.
We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. There are things, there are things that your neighbor doesn't know. There are things that who you even came with doesn't know. The tears that you see. His mercies and He said his love, his love will take care of it for you. He said his mercies and you every morning. <laughs> Do you know what that means? That means what the enemy meant for evil. It won't, it won't, it won't work. <laughs> It won't work because God's mercies, His mercies are over your life. His mercies, His love. All you need is His love. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned around. Turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for your good. Are you ready to declare that? Because that's a declaration unto God. I, you have to, you have to take action in your healing and declare that upon your life. Are you ready? Say what the enemy Hey What the enemy meant for evil upon your life God you have turned it around You have turned it around You have turned it around What the enemy meant for
myself as a point of contact for my family. I put myself as a point of contact for my nephews. <laughs> I put myself as a point of contact for my nieces. I put myself as a point of contact for my parents. <laughs> I put myself as a point of contact for my siblings. Because what the enemy meant for evil. God, you have turned it around. You have turned it around. There is no God like our God. He's a God of remembrance. He's a God who turns things around. Oh my God, turn things around. He's a God of turn around. Just declare it over your life. He's a God of turn around. There is nothing impossible for our God. You are never too far gone for God. Whatsoever plans that the enemy has over your life, our God is the master of turn around. He's the master of our, our breakthrough. In Him we live and move and have our being. Indeed, He's a faithful God. Oh, Father, we thank you this afternoon. We bless your name, Jesus. Indeed, oh God, we worship and adore you. You are a God of turnaround. You have turned things around. Father, we thank you. Receive our worship this afternoon. Be thou magnified and glorified. Open our hearts, O oh God, to receive your words that will transform, that will change us, that will move us to where you need us to be. This, Lord, we pray and ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Give Jesus, give Jesus a clap offering. Give him a shout, give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Begin to open the mouth and give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Ah, your shout cannot break down the walls of Jericho. Ah, begin to shout. Somebody begin to shout. Begin to shout their way out of captivity. Begin to shout their way to their breakthrough. Begin to declare it. Open the mouth and shout. Open the mouth and shout! Shout! Yeah! He's a Lord of breakthrough with your shout. Let your walls of Jericho come down. Yeah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You may take your seats and begin to thank God for your shout of victory. Thank God, open the mouth and thank God for your shout of victory. You see, oftentimes the issues and the challenges that we go through, they hinder us from walking in our victory. When you begin to declare with your weapons of victory, what God has done and what God is doing in your life. You begin to affect victory in your life. Every time you see in scripture, you find that one time God uses the shouts to break down the walls of Jericho. Another time he uses the praises. He allows the singers and the trumpets to go ahead and the voices of the singers and the scatters the enemy before Jehoshaphat. I don't know which weapon you may need tonight. Perhaps it may be a shout. Maybe it may be a praise. But you see, God is in the business of victory. God is in the business of changing things. Maybe tonight you may need some five smooth stones to slay your Goliath. You need to have an arsenal of God's weapons in your life. 
The challenge we have as believers is that we have allowed the world system to define the weapons we need to fight the warfares that are spiritual. But I've got news for you, child of God, that God uses different weapons. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not of this system. They are spiritual in nature, and you need to employ spiritual weapons to be able to declare spiritual victory. Everything that happens in the natural has happened in the spiritual before it, has, it comes to pass. So there are certain things, beloved, that can be stopped in the spiritual before they happen, depending on your level of progression in the things of God. So this afternoon, beloved, I've come to announce to you that there are times that certain things may come through. Despite your diligence, despite your ability to employ those weapons. But it all comes for a purpose. And this afternoon, by the grace of God, I'd like to share with you for a few minutes on subject I have entitled, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. I have seen, beloved, in the Bible that every time the Lord remembers somebody, it is to bring to attention and to act on their behalf. Let's turn with me to the book of Psalms 106 and verse number 24. Hallelujah. We'll take a minute, a few minutes. Just read the word. Allow the words to marinate in our spirit man. And then we'll take some time to pray. Amen. And I believe that according to your faith, as we have heard tonight, the Lord will remember you. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you. Psalm 106, verse number 4. Psalm 106 and verse number 4. Let's read together. It's up on the screen. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. Oh, visit me with your salvation. Remember me, O oh Lord, with the favor you have toward your people. Beloved, when the Bible says God remembers, the Bible is also talking about bringing you to God's attention. It does not mean that God has forgotten you because the Bible says that he has inscribed you on the palm of his hand, which means he has not forgotten you. He says in his word, can a, a nursing mother forget her baby? And he says, yeah, it is possible maybe that that nursing mother may forget, but I, the Lord, will never forget you. I have inscribed you on the palm of my hand. So when the Lord remembers a person, it is not because they have forgotten them. It, he is now simply bringing them to focus. He is bringing them into his line of sight so he can favor them. He's bringing them into his line of sight so he can act on their behalf. Hallelujah, somebody. So listen, beloved, it is not possible for God to forget. It is not possible for God to forget. And again, we see in scripture that whenever we see God remembering somebody, there is a visitation. Well, the last time I checked in the Bible, there was a woman called Rachel. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse number 22. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse number 22, there was a woman called Rachel. And Rachel's womb was closed. She had a rival who was her sister Leah who kept on reproducing, multiplying children, but Rachel was barren. Rachel cried to Jacob. Uh, was it Jacob? His, 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 his uh, Rachel, yeah, Jacob was the wife. And she cried to him, Lord. She said, Jacob, I need children. And Jacob said, I'm not God. I'm not God. But in the scripture, the Bible tells me, then God remembered Rachel. And God listened to her and opened her womb. May God remember you tonight. May God listen to your prayer tonight. May God open your spiritual womb tonight. May God open your financial womb tonight. May God open your womb. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you. You see, another place I see the Bible telling me about the Lord remembering somebody is in the book of, of 1 Samuel. In the book of 1 Samuel, the Bible tells me that Hannah was a desperate woman. This was a woman who was also desiring 
a baby. She was desiring a shift in her circumstance because she had Penina on her back who was always taunting her. There may be some people in here, your condition in life makes people laugh at you. There may be some people in here, the way people look at you, they call you by names. You see, there was a man called Bartimaeus in the Bible. Bartimaeus even had a title before his name. He was called blind. He was called by his condition. There may be some of you, you may be in this room, or you may be watching online, and you are called by your condition. When somebody is talking about you, somebody is asking, which woman are you talking about? They say, you know, they don't even call you by your name. They call you by your condition. They, you may be here. It may not be that condition, but there may be another situation in your life. Maybe in your place of work, people look down on you. They see you as a nobody. They see you as a nothing. Or maybe you are threatening their lives. And so they look upon you and think you are proud when you are not. I don't know what condition you have. But Hannah was a woman who was desperate for God's touch. She was a woman who cried out to God. She got to a place where she went to the altar. And she said, God, this is it. Because remember, year after year, Hannah went to the altar. But what was different this time? When I read in scripture, it seems to me that Hannah got to a place of desperation. And she got to the place where she says, God, if you do not touch me, where else can I go? If you do not heal me, where else can I go? If you do not deliver my family, where else can I go? If you do not change my story, where else can I go? Listen, beloved, people may identify you by your condition. The last time I checked, there was a woman in the Bible who had suffered for 12 years. She had an issue of blood. We don't know her name. All we know is her condition. You may be that kind of person. All people know about you is your condition. This woman got to a place of desperation. She had suffered. She sought doctors. She spent all her money and her condition was getting worse. She got to a place where she knew that if Jesus does not do it, I am finished. She had to get to a place where she said, I must touch the hem of his garment. Listen, beloved, this woman was weak. This woman was going on, pushing through the crowd. She did not care what was going on. She had to push through. Her condition made her desperate. I don't know if I have any desperate people in this room tonight who will cry out, Lord, remember me. When you favor your people, show me your deliverance. Remember me, Lord. Hannah cried. Eli thought she was drunk. But the Bible tells me in the book of 1 Samuel, the Bible says that the Lord remembered her. 1 Samuel chapter number 1 and verse number 19, the Bible reads, They arose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned to their house. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered. I don't know about you, beloved. How desperate are you for Jesus tonight? How desperate are you to have this altar speak over your life? How desperate are you to have God change your story? You are tired of people testifying. Instead of saying, Lord, why not me? How about saying, Lord, it is my time for remembrance? How about you change it around? Change it around. Beloved, I always believe that when we come into an atmosphere like this, we must come fully expectant that God will do something in our lives. Yes, don't come expectant for your neighbor. Don't come expectant for the person behind you. Come expectant for you that God will remember you. When God brings a word of remembrance, it means God has a sight on you. Another person, beloved, I see in the Bible, being remembered by God was a man called Cornelius. There are many people whom God remembered. But this man Cornelius, something triggered God. You know, I love the story of Cornelius because Cornelius was outside the realm of the Jews. Cornelius was a Gentile. And in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8, Jesus said that you shall receive power 
when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and then he says unto the end of the earth you will carry this to the Gentiles oh till then the Holy Ghost had only fallen on the Jews and those on the day of Pentecost that also caught something but when God was ready to move and to shift things he had to look for a landing point and so as he was searching for a landing point he found a man who was devout, who was religious. He found a man who was a sacrificial giver. He found a man who gave generously. Look at this. The Bible says the Lord remembered Cornelius and his giving. It was through the household of Cornelius that the Holy Ghost fell upon the Gentiles. God will always look for a landing point to remember somebody. Do you have something that can attract God in your life to remember you? Do you have a life of service unto God? Do you have a life of sacrificial giving unto God? Do you have a life of purity? Do you have a life of holiness? What is it in your life that can propel you to confidently cry out to God, Lord, remember me. Acts chapter 10 and verse number 31. The Bible says, in Acts 10 and verse 31, the Bible tells me that God said, the angel came and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. And it is from there that they sent people to Joppa. Peter receives the instruction. People are coming, go. And when they went to Cornelius' house, the Holy Ghost fell upon the Gentiles. I don't know about you, child of God, but it's time for God to remember you. It's time for God to remember you. See, when God remembers you, he will send his spirit upon you. When God remembers you, he will give you a sign. When God remembers you, he will speak into your life. I'll share with you one more person, beloved, who I see God remembering. And this is in the book of Judges. There's a story in the book of Judges concerning somebody called Samson. When you look at the story of Samson, Samson's story, it's a very interesting story. Samson had a similar, uh, his mother, there was a similarity with the women of the New Testament whom God was using, like, like John's mother, who was barren until a time was needed for the herald of Jesus' return. Until somebody was needed who would be a prophet unto Israel, Hannah had to remain barren. Listen, beloved, God sometimes closes your spiritual womb, your financial womb, your career womb for a purpose until his time is ready. Until his time is ready. But it's time to begin to cry out to God, Lord, show me my appointed time. So that your prayers are never in vain, beloved. When you look in the Bible, there is a story, this story of Samson. In uh, Judges chapter number 13, there is a story of Samson. Samson, the mother told him, told, rather the angel told the mother, that Samson will be a Nazarite. No razor would come on his hair. And that's where the secret of the power was. Now, Samson was born for a particular assignment. Samson's assignment was to destroy the Philistines. But you see, Samson lost his sense of purpose. The Bible tells us that Samson became successful. He, became, he was so strong, nobody could stop him. Success went to his head. If you read the Bible and you read his, his story, you find that Samson engaged himself with the wrong women. He engaged himself with the enemy and he began to release his secrets to the enemy. Many of us know the story of Samson. That success made him careless. Careless to the extent that when he went to bed with the enemy, he told the enemy the secret of his success and the enemy shaved his hair. Now, the interesting thing with, with us in life today is that sometimes often when we become successful we forget what made us successful when we become successful we forget the prayers when we become successful we forget the fastings we forget the time we spent crying on the altar when we become successful life takes over that was the case of samson he forgot where he needed to stay to continue having his power that's why when the enemy came he thought he could overpower them and he tried all that he could and nothing could happen and oftentimes, that is when we try to come back to God. But I've got news for you, beloved. You are never too far gone for God. He is always looking for you to return. 
no matter how bad things have become, God will always bring you back. All he wants is to see your heart of repentance. He wants to see your heart of a change where you say, God, remember me once again. Remember me. How do I know that God remembered Samson? There is a little verse in the Bible that tells me that God remembered Samson. If you look at, the, at, at this, the Bible says they cut off his hair. They, they were so excited. The enemy forgot. In, in Samuel chapter number 16, the enemy began to celebrate and they began to forget that Samson's hair needed to be constantly cut off. Because that was the secret. The Bible says, but the hair began to grow. Somebody say, but. Somebody say, but. But Samson's hair, beloved, began to grow. That gave me hope. That is in Judges chapter number 16. If you look at verse number 22. The Bible says, however, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. It's a little scripture, but it tells us something. Remember, Samson's power was in his hair. The enemy cut off his hair. I've got news for you, beloved. You think the enemy is smart. He's not as smart as you think. Don't give him, you give him too much credit. What they needed to do was to constantly shave Samson's hair. Instead, they began to celebrate that they have captured Samson. Some of you, the enemy is celebrating over you because you have fallen. But remember, you still have your prayer life. You still have your word life. You still have your fasting life. Begin to employ it. Begin to use it. The hair of Samson's head began to grow. Your hair can begin to grow. Maybe you've fallen. Things have gone bad. How about coming back to God and say, God, the way you used to visit me when I prayed, let me begin to pray again. Let me begin to study your word again. Let me begin to seek you again, Lord. Do something in my life again. And so when you look at this, in Judges chapter number 16, the Bible says in verse 28, then Samson called to the Lord, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. O oh God, just this once, remember me. A fresh anointing came upon him. And God answered Samson. Remember, Samson's assignment was to destroy the Philistines. All that he did, could, com could not compare to the last victory that he did. Because the entire senate was gathered in one place. And Samson brought down the entire government of Philistine with one stroke when God remembered him. Beloved, there may be some things that you are struggling in. But it's time to just say, God, remember me. God, do something in my life. Change my marriage story. You know, oftentimes people get married and... They go to people that have been married for 15, 20 years and they tell them, welcome to Shipikisha Club. I remember when I was taught that many years ago, I said, I don't want my marriage to be Shipikisha Club. I want my marriage to be enjoyable. I want my marriage to be a marriage of peace, of joy, of love, of happiness, not a marriage of Shipikisha Club. So you have to be careful also what you listen to. So you have to be strong and you have to cry to God. God, remember me in my situation. Because there are some of us, we get married and we start crying to the Lord after one year. Oh Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? The Lord never forsook you. How about crying to God and find out what you need to do? Maybe you lost your first love. Maybe you need to get back to that place. Some of us, businesses started well. And suddenly businesses are not going as well. Oh, the economy. Oh, there is this. Oh, there is that. The last time I checked, Isaac sold in the land of famine. And the Bible says he reaped in that land. So you need to understand, beloved, that the world system will put you down, but you are not of the order of the world system. So don't begin to follow the narrative of the world system. Begin to look into scripture for prescriptions in the difficult times and seasons. 
Begin to search the scriptures. When you look in the Bible, the Bible says, though there is famine in the land, my children will not go without bread. David said, I have been young and I've been old. I've never seen the children of God begging for bread or going hungry. So begin to look into scripture for scriptural prescriptions for the challenges that you are facing. Instead of looking for the world system's narrative. It's begin time to cry to God, Lord remember me and show me your favor. When you favor your people. Some of us are dealing with issues of generational problems. Some of us are dealing with issues of self-inflicted problems. Some of us are dealing with issues that are not of our own making, but they have landed on our laps. Instead of complaining, the Bible says complain about nothing, but in everything give thanks. So instead of complaining, begin to go to God and begin to tell him and begin to speak to God and allow him to show you his deliverance. It's time to stop making prayers of complaint. It's time to, 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 to stop making prayers of, of Lord, me, 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 me. How about God give me wisdom in this matter? How about God open your storehouse of knowledge that I may receive knowledge? Lord, remember me. Tell somebody, Lord, remember me tonight. Lord, remember me tonight. May I find grace in your sight, Lord. Remember me for new seasons. Remember me, Lord, for new beginnings. Remember me, Lord, for fruitfulness. May every barren life, may every barren issue be turned around. May my generosity, Lord, come before you in my season of remembrance. According to your mercy, Lord, remember me. I don't know who I came to encourage tonight. But I sense there is somebody that needs to cry to God, Lord, remember me. I've come to encourage somebody to let you know you are not forgotten before God. You just need to cry out and be desperate enough for him to turn to you. Listen, beloved, I love the story of Bartimaeus. I love the story of Bartimaeus. And you know, when, you know there's something about Bartimaeus. This man heard that Jesus was passing by. He heard. What have you heard? What have you heard? Now, have you noticed that when he heard that Jesus was passing by, what did he do? He cried out for mercy. He said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And what did the people around him tell him? Shut up. Who are you? You know, people begin to tell you that you are just occupying space. Move over. That's what they told Bartimaeus. They stopped him. But you know what? Bartimaeus did not care what they said. He knew that the solution provider was passing by. Tonight, the solution provider is passing through. It's time to stop every voice that is telling you you are good for nothing and begin to look to Jesus. The Bible says the more they told him to shut up, the more he cried out until Jesus stopped for him. The same people that were telling him to shut up were the same people saying, <laughs> Be careful of the words of people. The same people that shouted Hosanna, the very next day shouted crucify him. So you have to be careful. That is why you must never live your life according to the accolades of people. You must never live your life according to the systems of this world. Allow the system of God to change your mindset so that you can live above the system of the world. Hallelujah somebody. Lord, remember me. I invite you to just rise to your feet and I'll invite chosen generation to come up and Pastor E, you just come and uh, just uh, allow God to shift us. Allow God to do something in our lives. Allow God to break through for us. There is nothing too hard for God. You are never too far gone for God. Sometimes we feel God cannot help us. We always think God is the God of Apostle Sunday. No, he's everybody's God. We think God is a God of so and so. No, God is no respecter of persons. No matter your situation, if you cry enough for God, he will stop for you. 
It doesn't mean God has forgotten you. He's there. But it's time for us to change our position. I begin to cry to God. Become desperate for Him. Become desperate for Him. And, and stop putting God in a box and expect Him to behave or to act in a particular way every time. You know. There is a song when I walked in, I heard you singing. Filia fine mwaliakali. The same God of yesterday, today, and forever. The God that turned water into wine is in the house to turn your water into wine. The God that opened the eyes of the blind man is in the house to open your eyes. I don't know what you're trusting God for, what you're believing God for, but it's time to become desperate for God. And begin to declare, God, remember me. And allow the grace supplied on this altar at Shalom Embassy to begin to move over your life and to work in your life. And begin to cry out to God. I need to see some people that are desperate in this place. That refuse to say, God, I'll put you in a box. That refuse to allow the circumstances to shift them and to move them. But to stay focused on God. And begin to refuse and begin to tell God, I have made you too small. In my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me. Just tell him, just tell him, Lord. I have believed that you've already made my now. Oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my eyes and with my soul. Oh. Forgive me, oh God, for thinking that the miracles are only for others, not for me. The breakthrough are not for me. Lord, I exalt you in my life. Begin to exalt you. Begin to magnify him in your life. And begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God and cry out to God. Lord, forgive me for thinking that you can never help me. Lord, I come to you and I pray. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. And be free. Feel free to just come and to cry at this altar. Begin to talk to God and tell him, Lord, remember me. Lord, do something in my life. Be magnified, oh God, in my life. Magnified in your life, just cry to God, beloved. He's a God who opens every door, He's a God who makes the blind eyes to see, He's a God who never fails in His life, He's a God who never fails in His life. I'd like to invite you if you are here and in this place. And you just need God to do something in your life. I invite you to just take that step of faith and come to the altar. We're going to sing a song. We'll sing a song that you never fail. It says you never fail. It says this one thing, Lord, that I know. You never fail me. 
There's one thing I know that there is nothing, Lord, you cannot do. You'll never found me. Just talk to God. You'll never found me. Let God do it for you. You'll never found me. There's one thing I know beyond the price. You'll never found me. One thing I know behind the cross We will never fail You never fail My Jesus won't fail You never fail to deliver me you are more than able to heal me you are more than able to change my story just talk to God talk to God talk to God open the mouth and just talk to God declare it declare it Lord remember me you are a God who's more than able to do it you are a God who's more than able he's more than able you are more than able mando robo seke tendere bush Bendere baba bari kalia, bekora baka dere bosoko tolia, makamro ko sheke tendere bus. Holy Ghost, shift what needs to be shifted. Break every barrier, break every barrier, break what needs to be broken. You're more than able. You're more than able. You're more than able. You are more than able. You are more than able. You are more than able to see. You are more than able. Your mercies are new every morning. You are more. Your love is incomparable, Lord. Visit your people with your salvation. Visit your people with your deliverance. Oh Lord, remember your people. Remember, Lord, that woman that's crying. Remember that man that feels you at the end of their rock, Lord. Remember them, O God, and break the shackles of God. Bekora basoka, mareko sondo liya makaliya, bendere basoko don. Los takari amande bosu, mandere bosoko liya makaliya. Jesus, your God, mandere bosoko. Talk to God wherever you are. He's more than able. He's more than able. He's more than able. He's more than able. There is a woman you usually feel like there's something that moves around your waist. God is more than able. God is breaking it tonight. The Lord is breaking it tonight. 
Masoka makareboshi. Leko tondere basika. Every heaviness lifted in the name of Jesus. Matonda kalia busha. Leko story abakalia. Mareko tondo lobos. Holy Ghost move. Begin to touch your people Lord. On my left, on my right, touch. Makorebosa. Let's turn the lia candle bush. Mando robo shekete. Lord, remember your people. Lord, remember your people. Holy Ghost, from row to row, from chair to chair. Move. Move, Lord. Break every chain. Break every chain. Chains are breaking right now. Chains are breaking. Oh, Makorabosa. Menderebo shekete riba. Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. The spirit is moving. The presence of the Lord. Yes, let him let him break those chains. Let him shift things. Let him shift things. There are some things that are shifting. There is a man you've been knocking on doors and at the end of your rock. I've got news for you. Doors are opening this week. Doors are opening for you this week. I see a man you've been knocking on doors and you're very discouraged. The Lord has sent me to tell you that this is your week of remembrance and you will testify of the goodness of God. Let the chains break. The chains are breaking. The chains are breaking. The chains are breaking. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Yes, break, break, The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Yes, Lord, from road to from chair to chair, Lord. The spirit is moving. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The mountains falling. Mountains falling. Revival is coming. Revival is coming. For the spirit of the Lord. remembering from you and if you are here I invite you to just come forward and I'll pray with you I feel in my spirit led to just pray with a couple of people Lord we thank you for the says yeah. that with man things are po impossible but with God all things are possible all things are possible ah, I've come to bow down yeah. at your feet Lord. oh Jesus I've come to worship you 
hands to receive as you clap, just open, glory. open your heart and lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. You are the God. Lift up those hands. Lift up. Man, the impossible. Holy Spirit, God begin to touch your feet. You are the God. Begin to move. Holy Ghost, move over your feet. Breathe over them, Lord. Breathe over them, Lord. You will do what you say you will do. <laughs> you are not like man to lie to me. Lord, remember me as you pass. I believe and trust in your word, Jesus. You will do what you say you will do. Yeah. You're not a man to forget every word you've spoken. I trust there is power, wonder working power in your name. Remember me, remember me. Shaka taka teke, Remember me, remember me. Eka shaka kata, eke te kata. Every word you've spoken over my life, Jesus. I have a shake. Every promise you've spoken, Jesus. Shall come to pass in my life. Remember me, your faithful. Remember me. Oh, I know, I know, Jesus.
The same way you remember your servant. The same way you remember the woman with the issue of blood. The same way you remember her. Oh, no, no. Change my condition. Change my condition. <laughs> Change my condition. <laughs> yeah. I believe in your report. Change my condition. Now let you take a lesson again. Change your mind. Yeah. Change my condition. I believe there is power in your name, Jesus. Oh, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Hey. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are
should forget what you have promised you're not like any other you're so different so Jesus 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 break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Show us your glory. The same God that gives sight to the blind. The same God. Gives strength to the lame. He's in our midst, working. Yakata. Uh, He's in our midst, working. The same God who restored the sight of a blind man. The same God who raised Lazarus from the grave is in our midst tonight. He's moving in our midst tonight. And he's doing the impossible. There's working tonight. That situation must bow. That situation, my bow, must bow before Jesus. That situation must bow before Jesus. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. So see what the Lord has done. You have not been waiting in vain. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to us. See what the Lord. If you believe, raise your voice and see what the Lord. What you see, what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. What we waited for. What we waited for. Let's come to pass.
It has come to us. See what the Lord has done. That is your story. That is your testimony. See what the Lord has done. I was barren and now I have kids. See what the Lord has done. I was blind but now I see while we were. Has come to pass. Yeah. 